Hello and welcome back. Yes, I know I'm late for the episodes. We're already soon getting the next episodes from Time Bandits. I haven't done these ones yet. Don't worry, we'll get into them here in a moment. But just let everyone know everything's fine. I just had a great barbecue with the family and, you know, a few streams got in the way, which is great. Always fun to do. And I mean, Time Bandits isn't going anywhere, right? Anyway, that being said, let's go ahead and head into this first episode of last week, which is Georgian or Georgian. We'll see what it means. So they are sitting around eating sticks and twigs talking about waiting until the next portal opens so that they can possibly take Kevin back home, save his parents, and steal his food. So it looked like the Supreme Being was behind them, and it turns out that it's just one of the Supreme Being's lackeys wearing that huge hel helmet type thing, I guess. And the first thing he says is, don't give the Supreme Being the map back. Well, why wouldn't you give the Supreme Being the map back? Well, it seems because the Supreme Being, a.k.a. God, is um, trying to eradicate the entire planet, making him actually the bad guy. Georgian England. Apparently, this is Casanova. Fuck no. that. Way to state the obvious, kid. Alright, so Casanova traveled to England in 1763, hoping to sell his idea of a state lottery to British officials. He wrote of the English, the people have a special character common to the whole nation, which makes them think they are superior to everyone else. Ah yes, a turnspit dog. In 1750, there were turnspits everywhere in Great Britain, but by the 1850s, they had become scarce. And by the 1900s, they had disappeared. The availability of cheap spit turning machines called clock jacks brought about the demise of the turnspit dog. I mean, I guess it's not the worst depiction of what makeup was like during that time. So this is the Earl of Sandwich. I know this is the History Channel website, but I think for this it will work out fine. Do we call a sandwich a sandwich because of the fourth Earl of Sandwich? Yes. Now, in the show, they claim that he invented the sandwich. Was he the first person to come up with the idea? Not at all. The truth is, we don't know who invented the sandwich, but it has existed in various forms for thousands of years. One of the earliest known sandwich eaters was Hillel the Elder, a rabbi and scholar who was born in Babylon and lived in Jerusalem during the first century BC. The Haggadah, a Jewish text read during the annual Passover Seder, recounts how Hillel made sandwiches using Peshal lamb, bitter herbs, and unleavened matzo bread. In Jewish tradition, during the cedar dinner, participants remember this by creating their own matzo sandwiches. Flatbreads have a long history in the Mediterranean region in the Middle East. In particular, the idea of rolling bread with a filling is very ancient in Turkish culture, says Mary Eznan, author of Bountiful Empire, A History of Ottoman Cuisine. During the mid-17th century, the fourth Earl of Sandwich traveled to Turkey and other regions in the Ottoman Empire, which may explain where he allegedly got the idea to ask a club or restaurant server to make him a sandwich back in London. I have to tell you all about it. <laughs> sure. I'm riding. 
My hands are full, for I am on a horse with reins. The fox is running. View halloo! Whoa, beauty! My belly is empty. Whatever shall I do? Have no fear. Thanks to the sandwich, I can ride and eat all at once. Now, I'm at the card table. I'm hungry for chemin de fer, but I'm also hungry for food. Why not set a place and eat at the table with this hand? I've got to slam it down and exclaim, huzzah, as I take the wretch's money. A palpable <laughs> hit, Valentine. I have won back my wife. Luckily, I have packed a... A sandwich. Precisely. Any questions so far? Of course, the charms of Casanova have nothing on her. So this here is a pineapple party. Now, I couldn't find anything about the Earl of Sandwich celebrating a pineapple party, but I do know that parties like this did exist because, you know, pineapples, they are and were, well, they were um, definitely a rarity. And uh, I mean, you know, America later on did buy an entire island just to get the pineapple production, you know, just. It all comes down to money, but yes, um, not sure if this is really something that the Earl of Sandwich did, but sure. Ah, yes, a duel against the Earl of Sandwich made up rules about honor and cowardice. Not a reason to fight in a duel. Oh, tell that to a lot of great duelists throughout the ages. Cassius. And we are back with the sister. She it looks like she's back with the Neanderthals that didn't exist in England at the time. But wh whatever. I just have to point it out again with the dwarves. But they couldn't make the time bandits the dwarves that they were supposed to be. So during the duel, you learned that in society at this time, you no longer dueled. You shot straight up in the air because all of society would be killed and there would be no one else to duel. Oh, look, the trans demon is back. And then the demon just shoots the Earl of Sandwich. That's how it happened. Well, this porter looks pretty weird. Look, so I guess in this episode, there wasn't any major issues with the time with a real history which is fine whatever you know and i i do want to say i give this show a bit of leeway when it comes to a historical fact because it is indeed a show of course during the movie when they met like napoleon or something it wasn't completely historical correct so i do want to make that point just my angle watching this show because the if you watch the show, it's not funny. There's nothing to it. It's just blah. And it's kind of preachy at times. So the show isn't good, but to make it more entertaining, because I do want to make this perfectly clear for some people who don't seem to understand that I'm trying to make content off of this, is I'm taking it the historical route. I'm looking at the histories that they are at, that they are in, and talk about, of course, when they blatantly, just completely make up shit and don't, you know, like at least with Napoleon, him being, you know, a smaller, a tiny person, that was the caricature of Napoleon. There is no caricature of characters like the Mayans. Not actually eating people, not actually, you know, sacrificing human sacrifices, you know. Again, in this episode, there wasn't anything majorly that I have to that I can say like, oh, yeah, that was totally wrong. It did give us a few reference points to look into the other channel and make videos upon. I'm looking forward to that. I still have to get all of that set up and rolling all right i mean i guess that was it for this first episode of last week that was episode five georgian england i guess so let me know your thoughts down below what you thought of this episode what you thought of this video if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up if you didn't enjoy it give me a thumbs down whatever floats your boat and hey Consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications because that is the only way that YouTube knows that you are actually interested in watching these videos. 
Now, before I let you go, I do want to let you know that I will be watching the next episode, episode six tomorrow, doing the review, getting the video out tomorrow. And before, you know, I'll try to get back into the normal schedule that we have been doing for these videos because, you know, the next two episodes are coming out tomorrow. So if you're watching this on the day that it came out anyway, that's it for today and take care.